We're joined now by Mark Robinson. He is the lieutenant governor of North Carolina, and he's a candidate for the uh, governorship of the great state of North Carolina. Mark, appreciate you joining us, sir. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, c- could we get you to weigh in first? Now, obviously, North Carolina is an incredibly important state in this upcoming election uh, a ra- in a range of ways. Democrats still think that they can get some, make some inroads there, I think. But we're hoping you're going to be part of a, a North Carolina red wave. Before we get to that, though, when you see what's going on at the southern border and the Biden administration response to efforts by Texas to try to help, what do you make of that? Uh, well, everything that Joe Biden's administration has done has been counterintuitive to keeping uh, the board, first off, securing the border. And secondly, uh, keeping the Amer- American populace safe. Uh, he's, he's done an abysmal job since he's been in office. And, and unfortunately, this is a wretched crown jewel in that uh, in his bad administration. He's just everything that he's done has been counterintuitive to it. And uh, he needs to reverse course quickly for the safety and security of the American people. Mark, when we saw, first of all, thanks for coming on. Good luck in the campaign. We'll probably have you on again, certainly before Election Day. But when we saw how you were getting ta- attacked, we said, man, this guy's over the target. He's got to uh, We great. need to let him talk. To our, <laughs> yeah, we need to let him talk to our audience. But I wanted to hear from you. Why sure. do you think you have become the main target that you have getting ripped to shreds by the left? And what kind of response are you seeing from North Carolinians to those attacks? Uh, the overwhelming majority of our response has been positive. People are reaching out to us every day, and not just uh, just not just Republicans, Democrats as well, who are tired of the status quo. They're tired of the children being in failing public schools. They're tired of these social issues being forced on them in their in their homes and in their schools and in their churches. They're tired of uh, folks who want to try to destroy our economy and try to uh, let our border be wide open and let law and order uh, be destroyed. They're tired of it, and they're ready for a change, and they're ready for somebody who's going to stand up, say the things that need to be said, be unafraid to make the changes that need to be made, and move North Carolina in the right direction. If you're the governor of North Carolina, Mark, uh, and God willing, that's that's where this is heading, what are the biggest changes or the biggest policy decisions that you plan on making for your home state? Oh, uh, the biggest things we're going to focus on is our, is our economy and our education system. North Carolina has been on a great uh, run since 2010. We had a Republican takeover in 2010. Before that, we've been Democrat-controlled for decades. And uh, But we had a, a, a Republicans took over in 2010. When they took over, we were about $3.4 billion in debt to the federal government. We were furloughing state workers. I mean, we were in a shambles with our economy. Uh, those Republicans got to work and fixed our economy, and now we're – uh, not only not in debt, but we have a $5 billion surplus and we're the number one business destination two years running in the country. And so uh, we're we're poised to really start uh, growing our economy. And that's going to be our focus as governor, to grow our economy, as I say, from Murphy to Manio. Murphy being the furthest western point, Manio being the first furthest eastern point in the state. We want an economy that spans all the way across North Carolina and works for everybody, and that's going to be our goal. Education, what we want to bring back, we want to drive agendas out of the classroom, and we want to bring excellence back into the classroom. Everybody in this, in, we all hear this thing about DEI. Uh, our version of DEI is going to be not diversity, equity, inclusion, but discipline, uh, excellence, and uh, intelligence. That's going to be our version of DEI because that's what we want in education. We we don't want simply want a uh, a sound basic education here in North Carolina. We want our K through 12 students to get a world class education because that's what they're going to need to compete on the world stage, and that's what we want to do here in North Carolina. Mark, I don't know if you've seen this, and we're talking to Mark Robinson, who is the Republican uh, candidate for governor in North Carolina. Um, the data is out that people under the age of 30 are overwhelmingly unhappy in America. I'm sure you see this all over North Carolina talking to young people. Why do you think that is? And you mentioned education, but how do we fix it? I think we fix it by getting back to the things that we're all concerned about and joining together to fix those things, quite quite frankly. In politics, we allow about three or four different issues to divide us on everything. Look, I can't think of a single solitary person that doesn't want a great education system or a great economy or to be safe in their neighborhoods. Not a single solitary person can I think of 
uh, who is of good character that wants that. The problem is we allow so many things to divide us. It's time for us to start putting aside the things that we uh, disagree on long enough to work on the things that we do agree on. And I think when we start doing that, and I think when our so-called leaders, our public uh, elected officials start doing that in earnest, I think that we'll see uh, some happiness and some some cooperation start to come back in this country. Mark Robinson, everybody, Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina. He is running for governor in North Carolina. His website in that endeavor is markrobinson4nc.com. Clay's got one more for you, Mark. Go ahead. Okay, I got the toughest question for you, and I don't want you to dodge it. Duke, UNC, NC State are all – big schools in the NCAA tournament. Sure. Who is going farthest? Who is your team? North Carolina is known for basketball. Well, North Carolina is known for basketball. We love Tar Heel fans. We love Duke fans. Uh, We love all our fans here in North Carolina from Appalachian all the way across. But uh, my team is NC State, and I'm I'm really rooting for the Wolfpack to go deep, if not win at all. They did a great job in the ACC tournament. Winning five straight, and they did a. It was absolutely outstanding. I love to see them go deep, and I love to see them win it all. What did you think of that three that y'all hit? I think to beat or put it into overtime against Virginia. How high did you leap? What's the vertical look like? Uh, I know you're not a young man anymore, but can you still get up? Well, you know, I have to admit, I was actually, I was actually engaged at the time and was not uh, able to see the game. Uh, but when I saw it at Ball Back Shades with Jim Valvano, it really did. And like I said, I'm sure all Wolfpack fans probably felt like that. I know I said last question, but Buck and I have been talking a lot about the 2024 election, the outreach uh, for black male voters in particular. You're obviously a black yeah. guy running for uh, governor of North Carolina. Sure. Do you see and hear a lot of black male voters that are way more open to Republican arguments than they may have been in the past? And if so, if you buy into that, why do you think it is? Uh, Well, again, it's because people are tired of the status quo. You know, the Democratic Party has just simply taken its mask off. When you have a president who's willing to allow the border to stay open and allow, uh, uh, allow us to be in peril that way, when you see a president who's not interested in uh, maintaining law and order in our cities and is not interested in allowing America to drill for its own oil and have gas prices as high as they are and drive inflation through the roof, everybody is tired of the status quo right now. And they see that we were much better off under President Trump and Republicans than we are under President Biden. They see that here in North Carolina. They see it everywhere, and people of all stripes are seeing it. And I believe that uh, black folks are going to to be the same way. They're they're tired of the status quo, and they want something different, and they want something better, and I think they're going to choose me. The next governor of North Carolina, everybody, Mark Robinson. Mark, when you win, you got to come on and celebrate with us, okay? You got it, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck to the Wolfpack. Uh, Hillsdale College professors have used video streaming for more than a dozen years to make the case for the values of our nation's freedom. Their newest online video course now out. It's on a topic that will come front and center in the upcoming election cycle, all about citizenship and now how to protect the value of being a citizen in America. Free online course called American Citizenship and Its Decline, taught by historian Victor Davis Hanson, Online on-demand video course traces the history of citizenship and explains how it's undermined in America today by open borders, identity politics, the administrative state, and by globalization. Hillsdale's free online course is an important component of the mission to reach and teach millions of people on behalf of liberty and the American way of life. Sign up today for Hillsdale's free online course, American Citizenship and Its Decline, by visiting Clay and Buck for Hillsdale.com. That's Clay and Buck for Hillsdale.com.